Peace. What is up everyone? Welcome back to week number two of The Course in Miracles. Let's get into it. Alright, here we are. Welcome back. Once again, I am Oneno and we are on week number two of the 365 day course in miracles. That's 52 weeks and I have gone through lessons number 7 through 14 this week. Today is lesson number 14 and let's just jump straight into it. So lesson number 8 was kind of continuing along the lines of what the first week was going through. Obviously, it's a very smooth transition. Uh, lesson number eight was, my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. This was a very interesting lesson. It brought up for me a bunch of recognition on the fact that my mind is constantly looking at the world, or so I like to tell myself, but I'm always referencing my past in order to give meaning to the world that I see around me. And this lesson really had me highlight just what was going on through my mind and to recognize that it was thoughts of the past. Thoughts are always going through based on what has happened in my past. Lesson number nine, I see nothing as it is now. Obviously an extension of what I was just saying but the exercise was to literally look around the room and look at things like a door or a coat rack or a telephone or my arm or the tree or the barn. I love that barn, by the way. Isn't that beautiful? This is my new backyard in Nashville. I absolutely love that. Anyways, okay, so I see nothing as it is now. In fact, I don't even see that barn as it is now. When I look at it, I'm still perceiving my past thoughts on what I think these things are right now. Lesson number 10, my thoughts do not mean anything. This is where the ego starts to get a little threatened because the ego is in charge of maintaining all of these thoughts. And now all of a sudden, lesson number 10 is starting to tell me my thoughts do not mean anything. Let's go on. Lesson number 11. My meaningless thoughts show me a meaningless world. Now here's where the crossover begins to get a bit catchy for the ego because now the ego, my ego, has been going along with this and now I'm starting to see that the thoughts that go through my mind, the definitions that I have of this now present reality are all meaningless and therefore my meaningless thoughts are aiding me in perceiving a meaningless world. Lesson number 12. I am upset because I see a meaningless world. And the exercise for this one was to see the things that I find fearful in the world or dangerous in the world, hostile in the world, to recognize that I think I see these things, but in fact, what I am actually upset about is that there is a meaningless world in front of me that I am perceiving. And my mind, therefore, and my ego is attempting desperately to ascribe meaning to a meaningless world. But in doing so, I may be ascribing the wrong meaning to it. For instance, if you were to look at a stove and the meaning that you gave the glowing red stove was that it was cold and then you were to touch the stove, you would be in for a world of surprise because the meaning that you gave to that stove was entirely inaccurate until your true direct experience of that now moment with your hand touching the stove. Then you can create a whole new meaning. But then let's say one day you encounter a stove that somehow by the magic of science would be cold to the touch even though it was glowing red hot 
Now your past experience in the mind would be inaccurate once again to the now moment as it is officially presenting it to you in that now moment. So this is a little example I came up with for my own self on the lesson number 12. I am upset because I see a meaningless world. Lesson number 13, a meaningless world engenders fear. And it's true because my ego, uh, when going through these lessons, starts thinking about the world as meaningless, well, then it brings up all kinds of fear thoughts in my mind, all kinds of worry, and this world has to have meaning. If there's no meaning here, then what is here? Who am I in reference to a meaningless world? And I think that's where lesson number 14 really solidifies it all for this week, which is God did not create a meaningless world. In fact, it is specifically my ego and my mind that has created a meaningless world. The world as it exists is beyond meaning. And the world as it exists is a creation of God. And so any meaning that I give to God's creation can be seen as a type of understanding, but yet ultimately should be perceived as meaningless. My meaning that I give to God's creation um, does not change what God's creation is. Whether I call that tree a tree or a snaggletooth, <laughs> it doesn't matter to God. God created it, not my words or my definition of what that is. God created what that is, and I ascribe the meaning to it. So, I am upset because I perceive a meaningless world, but God did not create a meaningless world. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. I want these videos to be short. I just want to be documenting the process as I go through it. And I've been reading the book. Like I told you, there's two sections to the book. There's this whole first section is the actual book. And this last section is the actual course that you can go through for 365 days. And as I've been reading this and doing it with these daily exercises, I got to say it's definitely setting my mind free. It is open me, opening me up to seeing the world from a very different perspective and from a perspective that I already intuitively know. It's just reminding me of the perspective that is balanced and whole when it comes to the creation that I am in and a part of and made by. So that's where we ended for today. Thanks again for watching. Pop on over to the website, sign the email list so we can stay in touch at imoneno.com. Like the video, subscribe for more videos, and until I see you again along the journey, oneness in sound, I am Oneno. Peace.